Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I have something from Tomaten, Tomaten Decade 2, and this whiskey needs to be explained. <laughs> I paid 199 euros for this. Basically it's a no age statement whiskey, but yet there's whiskies from five decades in there. From the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, and 2010. All right, so what do we have here? First of all, we have this nice little packaging here. Um, whiskey base number 141298. A total of 3,600 bottles worldwide. Um, bottled 2019. And um, as I said, this bottle needs a tiny, tiny little bit of explanation. Oh, by the way, the explanation is basically here. So look, we have all the information here, 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2000s, 10s. That's very, very good. And if I actually go to the website here, let's get this set up correctly. Um, I go to the website of tomatin.com slash decades minus II. I actually have at the bottom, I want to know the recipe. And they send me even the percentages of the 21 casks used here to make this um, bottling, this expression, which I think is kind of cool. So my friend Sebastian, he is a, um, a brand ambassador over here in Germany for Tomaten. I've seen him at a couple of different fairs. He's been on a couple of my live streams in German and he sent me a sample of this. So Jason, this is gonna be the last dram, try it. And I was like, I was blown away. This stuff was so good. And he said, yeah, you have to look where you buy it, um, different prices for different places and so on. Um, in the UK, you can get this here for about £159 at Masters of Malt or House of Malt or so on. Over here in Germany, a good price at the moment is €199. Euros, and I actually see prices here of way over 250 at some places. Ouch. So um, limited supply, 3,600 bottles. So they're going, when they're gone, they're gone. Let's see if there'll be a decades number three. Now, what do we actually have here? I'm gonna let it sit in the glass a little bit so we can explain what we have here, all right? So first of all, we have whiskey from 1973, 1975, and 1977. I can say that. Um, oh, when I sent the email, I got the immediate reply and it says here, to ensure full compliance with EU regulations, we ask that you do not use the information provided below in any promotion, pro, um, promotional format or to share it in a public forum with others via blogs, uh, tweets, Facebook posts, etc. We want to provide this information to you and our customers so you have more information on the whiskey you're enjoying. That is our sole aim in doing this. And they're always trying to have more transparency. Oh, and by the way, this is in full compliance with the EU regulations. Scotland doesn't belong to the European Union anymore. Do they still have to comply with European regulations? I'm not sure. All right, so what I do know is that over... Um, uh, um, let's do the math real quick. About, I want to say about a quarter of this whiskey is from the 70s. That's a lot. Now on the official website I can read here, they use first fill bourbon barrels. Um, is that correct? Nope. They reuse, I read the wrong part. They used refill bourbon hogsheads that were distilled on the 23rd of February, 1973, on the 10th of July, 1975, and on the 23rd of September, 1977. They can give that transparency, all right? And the Tomatin from the 1970s um, is held in exceptionally high regard, prized for its depth and complexity. Matured and refill hog said this malt has taken on very little oak influence, which has allowed the air and liquid and cast to interact and to develop a wide array of tropical fruit flavors. And I taste that. So when I taste it, it does this. Oh, yeah, it just goes off the chart at the end. It's like, this is a lime tropical um, bonanza. It's so good. All right, so there's whiskeys in here, almost a quarter of the whiskeys from the 70s. Let's go back. How old are the 70s? So we have all of 2010, we have the 2000s, we have the 90s, and we have the 80s. So we're talking at least 40-year-old stuff in here. How much would you pay for 40-year-old whiskey? Come on, this is mind-blowing. A bottle of Glen Farkless, 40-year-old at the moment, goes for between 800 and 1,200 euros over here often. All right, so we have whiskeys from the 80s in here. 
and they were finished in first fill Odoloso Sherry Butts. That was distilled on the um, 12th um, of, am I saying that right? Yeah, I'm sorry, the 2nd of December, 1988. Oh, I was in Germany there. Yay, 1988. Very, very good. And the 1980s tomato is sweet and fresh, and the malt has been um, finished for over three years in a first um, Odoloso Sherry, but oh, only a finish, resulting in a whiskey reminiscent of um, aged cognac. Interesting. Uh, leather, polished oak, and dark roast coffee, along with flowers, flavors of stone fruit, dark chocolate, and tannin adds richness. Oh, I get that lime sweetness towards the end. In the 90s, we had the first fill bourbon barrels. That was a fairly large chunk um, from the 90s. So um, there was more than a quarter was in the 90s, which is still, think about it. We have 2021, and that's 1995. That's 26-year-old stuff. <laughs> so over half of this whiskey is more than 26 years old. That's it's amazing. As I said, this whiskey really needs to be explained. If you look at it, and if you were actually add a real age statement, the youngest whiskey is from 2013. It was bottled in 2019. So we would actually have to have a great big six here, which luckily we don't because I would not pay 200 euros for a six-year-old whiskey. And this is a little bit about the problem that we have is um, we think no age statement NAS um, has to be young. It's not. This is actually a mixture of those five decades, over 50 years of whiskey. Uh, Glenn Farkless just did something very similar with their 185, celebrating their 185th um, celebration. I have a bottle over there. I'm going to compare the two in one of my future videos. It's going to take about a month before I get to it, but I hope that it's also a similar great experience as this was. The bottle from Glenn Farkless was a hundred and something. Um, about 50 euros cheaper than this, let's say that. Um, all right, very, very good. So what we also have in here from the 2000s is we have um, Verdejo um, Hogsheads. And if I go over to the site here from 2000s, we have here the Recharge Verdejo Wine Barrels. And um, from 2000 onwards, Tomatin began to experiment with a wider variety of casks. And the malt used from the 2000s has been matured in these wine casts from these Vadeyao um, recharge to harness the full influence of the French oak. And this adds sweetness as well as some spicier notes. And from the 2010, we have here, this is a young tomatin. Uh, second fill casks uh, deliver this character of the distillery that shines through. All right. So I talked and talked and talked and I haven't tried it yet. I like this whiskey. Have I mentioned that? I really do. Now, um, in the Spirit World Spirit Competition, San Francisco, I received a double gold in 2020, which I totally um, understand. And if you go to the Tomatin website, you can actually see um, the, the distillers from 1974, 1979, 1988, um, 1996. Um, we have 2003, 2011, so we have different people here that were involved with this whiskey, which I think is kind of really cool, to be honest. All right, cheers. Mm. Now, this is the problem with the whiskey. Um, for me. Okay, 46%. Mm, yes, they do say non-sheltered and um, natural color. Thank you. Um, but it does come in a little bit like, oh, okay, that's very soft. Oh, wait a second. The softer side of the Highlands, Tomatin. And then it just, the finish is what really captures my imagination, my, 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 my soul. And it pulls it into this wonderful moment of um, deliciousness. Before, just, oh, okay, good, a tiny little bit of sweetness, tiny little bit of oak, a tiny little bit of malt. Um, there's some fruitiness in there, and then it's, it's like, oh, yeah. And this is what I really like about this whiskey. Now, um, my friend at the whiskey um, fair, he would actually pour it and say, here, free sample. Um, try it. If you like it, you can buy the bottle. And it was like, all right, good free sample. And I was like, wow, this stuff is amazing. How much does it cost? 199 or I think it was a price at the fair. It was 179 It was like, I'll buy it. 
And um, it was like, you, you need to understand that there's different, oh, yeah, wow, that's amazing. It was like he already sold the whiskey just in the taste, and then he explained the whiskey, what it was, the, 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 uh, the whole story behind it. And some whiskeys need to be, unfortunately, need to be explained a lot. And this is one of those whiskeys that just does not sell itself due to that label. Um, yes, Decades is good, Decades number two, but actually this would never, if I picked up this bottle and looked at this and I did not know what it was, and it was like 199 euros, are you kidding me? And then it would, I would open it maybe up and take a look at that, and then I would see, wait a second, oh, 70s, 80s, 90s, oh, wait a second, what's going on here? And I would actually have to read it almost like a... Um, uh, like a TV guide, like an instruction manual, then I'd be, oh, okay, that's interesting. And then I would still, it's still not worth uh, 200 euros. And then I would ask maybe at the shop, and that's the difference between online and at a real shop was, hey, do you have a bottle open? Could I try a sample? Is that, yes, I, I do, and try this. And, oh, wow, sold. And that's the thing here. It's, <laughs> it sells itself liquid to the lips. It doesn't really sell itself, in my personal opinion, unfortunately, with this Packaging. That's what I'm looking for. Packaging here. All right. Very, very good. Can you please tell me any other whiskeys that have a similar setup over decades, different whiskeys mixed together and then sold as something like that? Glenn Farkless, 185, Tomatin, Decades. I'm sure there's someone else has done it. Who knows? Um, this actually gets at the beginning a more of a more of a type of um, C plus, and then that finish gets a. Uh, almost a one almost an a minus so i'm going to level this out this is actually a b whiskey a b b plus depends on the day if it would be from the very beginning here and then going up i would no problem but it it actually starts here and then wow so it's a b b plus whiskey value for money i'm still going to say c minus maybe even a d plus this is not a whiskey that you need this is the whiskey you should try, <laughs> but this is not one of those whiskeys out there that you're gonna say, oh, I miss that whiskey. And if you like that old whiskey flavor, that lime, that tropical fruit that comes through, if you like to have some whiskeys that are, are, are unique and um, uh, out of the box, this is the thing you should have. But this is not one of those whiskeys that like buy it or else you're gonna regret it for the rest of your life. Um, buy it and you're going to be happy you bought it, but I think there's going to be no regret if you don't. Yeah, I think I might have to go out and buy another one and put it in the tasting somehow. I'm going to probably do a no age statement tasting one day, and I think I'm going to try to wow them with a lot of different whiskeys that are fantastic, even though there are no age statements. I do, I do not prefer whiskeys losing age statements, but if they create a whiskey without an age statement and has a story like this, go for it. I think that is fabulous. All right, like, subscribe, tell others, maybe even share this video with someone else on social media. Tell them about this crazy guy over here in Europe tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. A lot of single cask, a lot of stuff you might not ever, ever see. There was no comparison whiskey today. I will use this, though, to compare it to the Glen Farkless. All the best. Whiskey Jason here. See you soon. Bye-bye.